Hey, I'm Andrew Connell. This video is an overview of one of the chapters in my course, Mastering the SharePoint Framework, that's available for uh, purchase on my site, Voitanos.io. This overview video is going to give you an idea of everything that the chapter uh, covers. You can learn more by checking out the description uh, in the notes below the video. Um, if you got any questions about this chapter or about the course in general, just make sure you drop a comment uh, below in, in the uh, below the video, and I'll be sure to get back to you. So with that, let me get out of the way. Enjoy the overview to this chapter. If you work for a multinational organization or you're a consultant or an ISV building SharePoint framework solutions for customers who have users that speak different languages, why would you build a solution that targets just one locale in one language? Building multilingual and localized SharePoint framework solutions is easy, and this chapter is going to show you how to do it. So what exactly are we going to cover in this chapter? This chapter will start with an overview of the capabilities and the ways SharePoint handles multilingual sites. This includes support for different language packs and a brief overview of features that you'll find in SharePoint Server and SharePoint Online. But this is a developer course, so we're not going to dwell too much on the details of implementing a multilingual site in SharePoint. Rather, this chapter is just going to focus on the developer aspects as they relate to the SharePoint framework. Now, back to the topic of the SharePoint framework, we're then going to delve into understanding how localization is addressed within the SharePoint framework. You're going to learn how to localize the metadata of SharePoint framework components, such as their names and their descriptions, as well as a few other elements. And then we're going to look into localizing the content or the Chrome that's used within our custom SharePoint framework components. Next up, we're going to look at how you can provide your users a multilingual option for entering different string translations for properties in an editing experience. Now, this lesson is also going to show you how you can use the SharePoint Framework API to determine the preferred language of the current user. And then we're going to look at some of the design challenges and how to address them ahead of time when it comes to working with localized content. And then finally, in the last lesson in this chapter, that we're going to look at the differences in how localization files are handled and packaged between the two different types of builds, debug and release builds. So let's get started. 